After a long journey, your ship finally enters the ports of Kemi. Its great black walls rising out of the mists, and before them, two polished black obelisks, covered in the runes and writings of Stygia. Today, on Starships and Steel, we're going to make an obelisk. Stay tuned! Today, on Starships and Steel, we're going to do a pretty simple craft. It should not take very long, but it should be a pretty cool addition to your table. We're going to make a black obelisk. It's going to look something like this one. It's going to be a matched pair to this one. I don't know if I'll be able to see that, but I'll maybe I'll put a picture up in the corner so you can see it a bit better. All right? So it's covered in runes. Um, it's not quite as shiny as I want it, so I'm probably going to hit it with some more uh, gloss, but we'll get there. I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools that I use because I do use a, a special tool on the obelisk and I got I got this at Michael's um, and it's a it's a burner they're not hugely cheap I, I think they're and I don't remember exactly 40 or 50 dollars so that's a fair bit of investment um, it's not just a burner though it comes with multiple heads in a cool little box and I'm not I'm going to tell you to run out and spend like 50 bucks on this. That's a lot of money. What I would tell you is that it's, I think it's a pretty useful tool and I would wait for a 40% or 55% off coupon and then I would buy it for about 20 bucks. I think for 20 bucks it's a pretty, pretty useful tool. It's got adjustable heat on it. Um, I've got a little mark where I uh, put the heater for my, my needle point basically. So it's got like a little needle point, which is what I used for doing uh, the runes. And then a bunch of other points that I have actually never used. But I think that is pretty useful. It has a little hot, uh, hot exacto knife too if you want one of those. So that's going to be a special tool we're going to use for this project. Can you get by without it? Probably, but I found this allows you to make fairly small runes in a fairly small space, which eventually I think look cool and add a lot of character to the piece. Today is March 17th, and this video might not get published on March 17th, but maybe it will. Either way, for me right now, it's still March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. There is really only one beer. Well, I just got, there's a whiskey I would drink too, but I, I think I drank it already on the channel, so we're not going to use that one. We're going we're gonna to go with the old standby, Guinness. So Guinness is pretty, pretty tasty, and it's, I mean, not everyone thinks it's the best stout in the world. But it's what I measure stouts by because it was my first stout and it has the creamiest head of not all of them because some of them use the same technology that they developed to get that creamy head. If you're unfamiliar with a pint can of Guinness, um, inside each can is a little plastic ball. So it's called a widget. There's actually some still beer in there. I gotta get rid of that. So I don't know if you can see that or not. but. There's a little bit of beer left in there. Um, when they seal these cans up, these balls are filled with nitrogen. So that's different than most beers. Uh, most beers and like pop are carbonated. So when you open them, the carbonation comes out of solution in the liquid and then it's everywhere. Uh, Guinness and a few other ones that use widgets aren't carbonated. They don't have any dissolved gas in, in the fluid. All the gas is in here. So much like a tap in a brew house that is impregnating the gases as you pour, this impregnates the liquid when you open it, which means sometimes it uh, can be a little bit messy, but shaking them up should not matter. We're not going to try that on a channel because it's cold, so hopefully it won't foam up too much. Anyways, here we go. Oh, here we go. Gotta be ready sometimes. Ooh, making a mess. Have to wash the tablecloth now. Let's pour our beautiful head. It's gorgeous. If we do a good job, we can get a little bit of the cascade going, which is something you get off the, the taps. If you want one of these in the bar, see the cascade on there? You don't get your Guinness right away. You're supposed to let that settle out. We'll let that talk. That's beautiful. Look at that. You guys can, probably can't see it there. You guys are missing out. Let's try this.
pretty cool. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. This is my, my, like I said, my favorite stout. I, I love this stuff. Um, you can see that it doesn't fill up the glass to my ounce mark, which is over here. Because it's only a can, and I spilled a bunch, so it's about perfect. So, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. And I hope that you guys enjoy a creamy Guinness, or maybe some Irish whiskey tonight. But I would say avoid the green beer. That is a good beverage. Pretty low alcohol wise, 4.2%, which is lower than a lot of beers. Anyways, dollar store. First thing I was looking for in the dollar store was a snake, because Stygia set snakes. I wanted something decent sized. So I got this, this one here with a couple little ones. And really what I wanted was the head, because I want to cast the head. So we'll do that in another video. Basically, we're going to show you a simple way to make duplicates of this head. I also got some dinosaurs. Everyone likes dinosaurs. I mean, so this is a miniature here. You guys see him. Let's get my, my little prop box up here again. We got our little miniature here. He's this big, standard like 32 millimeter. Okay, so I got a Velociraptor in there. He's pretty big. Um, that's not so good. I got like a Brontosaurus. He's uh, he's pretty small. That's not so good. I got this guy. He's scaled not bad. Could definitely use that guy. And I also got, of course, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, who's actually scaled pretty good as well. So I got some pretty good dinosaurs out of that. These were like I don't know four bucks, if that. So that's a good deal. And I got one more thing at the dollar store. I'm looking for one of these. This is an egg timer. If your players are taking a really long time to choose their their next move, they're like like really taking a long time, you'd be like, oh, put that up there. And I know that's a three minute timer. And they can see it running down. Now they feel some pressure to make their decision. In Conan, if they don't, maybe I start taking Doom points. Maybe I use that Doom point interrupt initiative and attack them. So that should add some real-time pressure onto the players, which should be pretty fun, I think. That'll, I think, be awesome. One more thing. If you're interested in the Conan RPG, uh, Modifius just re-released the Quick Start Adventure with all the new rule changes and updates since the first one was released. So you can get that on Drive-Thru RPG. So go grab that, take a look, see what you think. So, cheers everyone. Again, happy St. Patrick's Day. Drink a Guinness or have some nice Irish whiskey for me. And if you do, let me know what you had in the comments below. Let's go build that obelisk. All right, so let's first start with our tools list. We're gonna need our burning tool we talked about, a hot glue gun, some scissors, a razor knife, some sandpaper. For materials, we got some foam, which we can't see, and a little bit of chipboard for the base. And that's it. So let's move on to build the obelisk. So the first thing we want to do is measure it based on the current obelisk we have, because we're going to build a second one. So just lay the original one on the, on the foam and trace around it, just like that. Make sure it's approximately the same size, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, we need a ruler too, obviously, to cut straight lines. So just use that, and we want to make sure our lines and cuts are as smooth as possible. So make a lot of small, shallow cuts. If you tear it out a little bit, you can go back with the sandpaper and smooth it out somewhat, but it's easier just to make sure you get them smooth in the first place. The top off, compared to the other one, looking good. So we have a little bit of a bevel on the top, so we'll just make a line over that. And that'll allow us to bevel that off approximately in the same location. So again, just get your razor knife once you've got your line drawn on there. Just kind of eyeball this, cut this however you want. So it looks like the other one. There we go. Looking pretty good. So the next thing we need is uh, the first obelisk, as you can see, it's made out of three blocks, a small one in the bottom, and then a middle one and a top one. So we're just gonna draw some lines on here. And I just use the lines on my, uh, my cutting mat to kind of guide my, my straight line. 
Just make sure you're looking straight down the line, otherwise it'll skew. So we'll see here as I finish my third line, we'll see that it's pretty well matched up all the way around. It's exactly what we want. It's perfect. Nice. Okay. They look pretty good. So I'll take our razor knife again and score a little ways into those along those lines just so we can use our pen again to you know detail them a little bit so the paint doesn't go in there so you can see them so the edges of the original obelisk are sanded a little bit so it's not exactly square so we're just going to go in there and finish that up so that's more of a octagon kind of shape I guess so now we're taking our pen and we're just pushing those lines in a little bit There we go, we got our base for our obelisk. Looking pretty good. So the next thing we need is a base. We'll take some chipboard, use approximately the same shape as you did on the first obelisk, and just take a pair of scissors and cut that right out. And then make sure it's in there. Get your hot glue gun. And I knocked my camera here, so just pretend. Put some glue on there, stick it in the middle. If you have any excess, take like a bamboo skewer or something and just wipe it off. Alright, so now we're going to take a little piece of foam and we're going to test out our cutter. So we're just going to uh, draw some runes on this little board and take our, our hot foam cutter here, burning tool, whatever you want to call it, and see that it works pretty good. The setting I want right now is actually in the end a little bit hot. I get a little bit of wisps coming off of it, so I might have to turn it down, which we'll see. So here I'm just kind of laying out the runes I want. You can either use a pen and lay out exact runes or like Norse runes or strange insignias or sigils or whatever you want or you can just do it randomly with the with the burning tool which is what I normally do this is just a, an example we'll take the burning tool and then just go back in over top of the pen marks that we just made just like that go through now we'll see there's like I was saying these little wisps on here so they're kind of annoying but they're not it's not horrible, you can you can get them off. So I just turned the pen down and then went back in. And like I said, you might want to play with your pen a little bit, your burning pen, so you can get it to the right temperature for your foam. And then just go through it, follow your pen marks, like I'm doing here, or just go in freehand, which I'm doing here. My runes are just random symbols, parts of letters, whatever. The bottom is just three lines or two lines, I think, so just trace those in. There we go, perfect. Just back over them, make sure they've got some good depth on them. So that's good. So we'll just uh, go ahead and get that finished up for you and come back when it's finished. All right, so we've got all four sides done now. We gotta put two more lines in on the bottom, then we can do the top. One there, one there. Perfect. Almost finished carving. So I'm gonna make a little comment on, on carving with this hot tool. I'm gonna draw some runes on here just for an example. The direction that you pull your tool or push your tool will make your life a lot easier. It'll probably be pretty obvious if you play with it, but it's important when you're using this that you pull with the tool instead of pushing. Pulling's easy, pushing is hard. So with the circle, start at the top and then pull around the curve, back to the top, pull around the curve. This one, pull down, pull down, rotate it, and then pull across. This one's pulled down, pulled down, rotate, pulled down, and then pull to the bottom, pull to the bottom. There's times if you're just doing it really quick, if you want to do like a little L shape, you can kind of do that. It's not completely impossible, but it won't be as nice as if you just pull the whole thing. So that's just a quick primer on how you want to carve these runes. Remember, pull. Pushing's bad. Okay, to the top. I got some detail on there, so we're just going to add those to the top of the, the pillar. 
All right, so pretty good. Now we have the shape and all the runes carved into a match set for the first one. So this is my practice piece. This is just me messing around, trying to get my heat settings done. You just play around a little bit, you probably even get a usable piece of terrain. Take our hot gun, we're gonna follow our, uh, our hot gun, our hot cutting tool, and we're gonna follow our, our lines that we use for the separation in the stones. Just make them a little bit bigger so they stand out a little bit better. All right, here's my old pink mat. I'm gonna paint on this so it doesn't get wrecked, my new one doesn't get wrecked. Here's my palette. Just take some black paint. That in your palette, book. Just like that, like my sound effects, pretty cool. So the water, water dropper bottle here I use to mix my paint. If I wanna make it a little bit runny. In this case, I wanted a little bit runny. I wanted to get into all those cracks and crevices. I wanna fill those runes up. And just paint it all up. You're probably gonna need two coats because this one's pretty, pretty runny. So once I got that paint on, I kind of went back in with a paper towel here. Just kind of dabbed it off just to make sure I had no excess paint on there. Then I went back in and then recovered it again with paint. That's still my first coat. So with that on there, let it dry. Drink some more beer. That's always important when you're building these things. Get some more black paint. I'm going to use this one a little bit more solid, no water added to it. Let's go back over it with black, make her look nice and black again. There we go, that's perfect. All right, so we'll get that done. We'll move on to the next step. The brush marks going uh, all the same way. The base cleaned up a bit. Get some slate gray color. We're gonna use this as a sponge brush. We're just gonna take some of that slate gray color. We're not gonna use a lot of it. You want it to be minimal on this. So dab it until it's pretty much done. Remember if you dab it hard, it'll still give you darker marks, which we don't want. You want a light layer of gray over top of this, like maybe 5% coverage if you can get that. Basically we want it to look black or really, really dark, 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 dark gray with the rune still showing through. Now we're gonna get some Liquitex medium gloss varnish. And we're gonna take our brush. And just cover the entire obelisk in the gloss. This will make your stone look a little bit polished, a little bit shiny, which I think is a pretty cool effect for this especially for what we're trying to do here. Just get it on there, make sure your brush marks look pretty good. Cause this stuff's a little bit thick, so perfect. All right, so next thing we need to do is work on the base. This stuff is Vallejo's gray pumice. You might not have this in your house, that's understandable. It's just basically like a fine pumice in a glue essentially. We're not gonna use it on the second obelisk, we're just gonna use glue and sand because you probably have that. So we'll take our white glue, get it on there, spread it out with a brush, and get our sand on here. And then we'll, once we get the sand on here, we'll just go ahead and paint up the other one. And then off camera, I'll paint this one up and then you can see how the, they look differently. that, the sand away, and we'll get ourselves a, so that looks, all right, some burnt umber. This is a pretty dark brown, we use that as our base coat. We're gonna use three different colors of brown on this. These are just basic craft paints. And on there, once that's dry, we go into dry brushing with uh, some cashmere tan. Which is this one here, cashmere tan. 
Makes your brush pretty dry, pretty clean. Doesn't be 100% clean, we're, we're painting brown on brown here, so. Get a new piece of paper towel and some paint on there. Just run it across the paper towel until you can pull the detail out of the paper towel. And then just kind of go over the pumice lightly and that'll pull out some of the details and you get a pretty cool effect. It's like that. And finally we're gonna use, uh, I think it's called oatmeal. This is the third color I use for this. Same thing, nice dry brush on there. And then just put a little bit on. And if you can make this brush even drier than the first brush, that's perfect. All right, so that's the obelisks together. Looking pretty good. And like I said, we'll come back and uh, do the other one off camera. But before we do that, we'll take some 50-50 white glue and we'll just seal those rocks down so they don't come off when we go to paint them. So there's our mixture, 50-50. Drip, drip, drip. So then we'll go back in with our brush and just spread that in. We'll just let that dry for a few hours and then we can go back in and paint it. So this base here is the Vallejo pumice and this base here is the rocks. So it's much coarser, um, not as fine looking. Vallejo, regular rocks. And that is the end of this episode of Starships and Steel. If you thought this video was cool or interesting, please hit like below. If you think you might like to see more content from this channel, please subscribe. If you have other groups that you think might find this interesting, please share our link. And I want to thank everyone for watching and subscribing to the channel who's here already. You guys have a great end of your St. Patrick's Day. And remember, have fun.